yesterday, uh, Charlie, Charlie Rangel steps down from the head of the Ways and Means Committee in the House, the very powerful committee, the most powerful, controls funding in the House, uh, and uh, next in line in seniority is Pete Stark, and they make him the chair. I thought, well, that's interesting. A little unsuspect, you know, a little surprising, let's put it that way. And yesterday, I put, had a note of caution on that, so I don't know how long he'll last. Well, it turns out the answer is one day. Ladies and gentlemen, they got him. They got him instantly. Well, why? Because, as I told you, Pete Stark's a real progressive. In fact, what am I telling you that I told you? Here, let's, uh, so you're clear, so there's not some false bragging or anything like that. So let's just watch what I said yesterday. Go. But on the upside, Pete Stark, who's a real progressive, uh, is now the head of the uh, Ways and Means Committee in the House, which I almost can't believe, because yesterday, as they were talking about who might replace Wrangell, they said uh, Pete Stark's up next, seniority, et cetera, and they said, well, but it might not be him. And I was like, of course it's not going to be him, right? Uh, they got to get him out of there and put in a guy who's going to play ball, right? But no, no, hey, look at that. Pete Stark, really the head of that uh, committee uh, controlling the funding. Mm. That ought to be interesting. By the way, if they take down Pete Stark for any reason, you know what happened. He didn't play ball. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, one day. It took him one day to take Pete Stark down. And they, some of the papers were joking around about how he was the shortest serving chairman ever. Uh, what happened? So Pelosi put him in charge. He was uh, next in seniority. It makes sense. You know, he's 78 years old. He's been in Congress for a long time. Uh, but the rest of the committee rebelled. They're like, this guy, he won't give out our pork, and he won't. We need to be able to give out all the favors to the lobbyists, and this guy's a real progressive. We can't have that. So look at the stuff they invented that they uh, leaked to papers like Roll Call. Okay, so they say, oh, he's uh, called Republicans bad names before. Oh, no, come on, you're kidding. You're, that's the best you got. Apparently he called Representative Scott McInnes from Colorado a little wimp. He called uh, Nancy Johnson, Republican from Connecticut, a whore for the insurance industry. You know why? Because she very likely is. Okay. No, oh, I can't believe How dare you say That's enough to take down a guy who's 78 years old and has the second most seniority on that committee? That's not enough. So then they had to invent other things. The roll call just flippantly says he has ethics troubles of his own. Really? Which ones? What? I haven't heard of any ethics troubles. What? Where's that? Oh, you don't... You got a two-page story here, roll call. Where's his ethics troubles? Oh, you just kind of threw that in there as a little dagger at him, right? Because he's not playing ball. We've got to get rid of him, okay? And point number three. <laughs> Can you believe this? Their point number three is he has health problems. And, but they, the health problems are two words, health problems, and then it leads to this sentence, uh, which sidelined him from 22% of the House votes last year, the fifth worst participation record in the chamber. Well, he can't participate that much because he has freaking health problems. No, no, that's a strike against you. None of this is why Pete Stark is the, not the chair of the Ways and Means Committee right now. It's because he doesn't sell out to lobbyists, or certainly not as much as the other guys want to. You see, this is how the system selects the guys who are going to serve the interests of money big money in this country. It's not that the guy who gets up there is particularly evil or anything like that. It's that when you have someone who will not be part of the system, he gets weeded out. It took him one day. Remember what happened to Ashley Banfield at MSNBC when she questioned the Iraq war? They put her in a closet. So, you know, I can go on and on about examples from the media, right? So in the media, you don't play ball? Nah, well, you get demoted. And the guys who have played ball their whole careers, they get promoted and promoted, and they think it's because they're successful or smart or brilliant or they know journalism. No, you got promoted because the guys who make money off your ass thought, well, this guy isn't going to question anything. And the same in politics. If you don't actually give the lobbyists what they want, then the rest of the committee has problems with you because they have ra problems raising money if you don't let them do what they're going to do normally. So Pete Stark, out, gone one day. And that's how power crushes opposition in this country.
In his place will be Sandler, Sander uh, Levin. He's a, a Democrat from Michigan, long-serving uh, congressman. I don't want to besmirch him or anything like that, but apparently people don't have a problem with him. He is the brother of Carl Levin, a uh, senator from Michigan, and uh, everybody's fine with them. So that makes me question. <laughs> okay. You understand how politics really works? This is it right here. Of all the stories we've done, and I've given you a hundred little examples of how they leave the administration and they go and get Halabi's jobs, et cetera, et cetera. There's a million stories. But this is one of the most illustrative. And the reason is, it's not an evil conspiracy where they say we have to eliminate Pete Stark. It's not, hey, let's take the most evil people and promote them. It's not, uh, okay, the guys at the top are the greediest. No, it's subtle. It's just like this. Pete Stark, he called Nancy Johnson a dirty word. You know, and he talked about how she sells out to lobbyists. Mm, Pete Stark, Pete Stark. No, there's trouble with Pete Stark. No, can't have it. No, we take power away from Pete Stark. Which one is it? Sometimes I feel discouraged. Yeah. There is no bomb. <laughs> there is no bomb. Uh, all right. Now, uh, let's go to Limbaugh on Pete Stark, and you can tell right away how much the establishment hates Pete Stark. Go. I mean, it's supposed to be that big day, and what today? Open with another Democrat having to quit something because of some corruption scandal. Charles Rangel. Now what do they do? You know who's next in line for this? The Probably the most, and it's a close call here, the most genuinely insane Democrat in the House of Representatives is next in line. Fortney Stark from the Bay Area. Fortney Pete Stark, but however... Uh, the Congressional Black Caucus behind the scenes is pressuring the Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, to go deeper, to go further down the chain of command. you got to get a black face in there, they're saying. I mean, you can't humiliate Rangel by forcing him to give up the gavel and replacing him with a lunatic, insane white guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John Lewis, the guy that Limbaugh is referring to, the black face that they uh, apparently theoretically needed according to uh, Limbaugh's conspiracy, actively turned it down, said, under no conditions will I take it. So what happened to the conspiracy rush? No, they gave it to Sander Levin. Uh, you're not going to, I presume you're not going to tell us about how they needed a Jewish face on there, right? No. Okay, apparently not. Um, no, but when you say, oh, they need a black face, you don't have any problem with that. But anyway, okay, you're full of lies, as usual. Uh, but much more important is, do you get what happened there? Pete Stark is insane and he's a lunatic. Why? Because he doesn't want to let corporate America rob you day in and day out. Anyone who doesn't play ball is insane and a lunatic. It happens over and over again. Watch, you'll see. Okay, first of all, what was Howard Dean when he was running and he was so popular back in 04? Instantly, the minute he challenged power, he became an insane lunatic. Now, if you look at all the issues, Howard Dean turned out to be 100% right on all of them doesn't matter. He's not playing ball, hence he's insane and a lunatic. The reality is the insane have taken over the asylum, okay? And the few people that are left that are sane and reasonable and decent and moral, well, that power will not tolerate them.